Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountains. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. <laughs> the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdom of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts must rift the host of the battle. Now they read here and it looked like it's some big calamity coming, right? Mm -hmm. And he said that he got these sanctified ones, the mighty ones for his anger, and even them that rejoice in his highness. Seem like they love God, right? Mm -hmm. He's not talking about them rejoicing in his highness as far as his commandments, brothers and sisters. But in his power, remember the powers that be are what? Ordained of God. Mm -hmm. When you read the scripture, he actually told us in Psalm and he told us in the law, he said, you shall not revile the gods. He said, I say ye are gods, but you shall die as men. Look up that word. Guess what that word is? Elohim. Because the word Elohim don't just describe the most high. He is the ultimate of Elohim. But even on the earth, there are Elohim. When the governments are Elohim, the kings and the rulers of the earth, not just the kings and the rulers of the nation of Israel, but even these other countries, their cabinets and their prime ministers and their parliaments are gods of the earth. And they rejoice in the highness of the Most High, meaning that they all benefit from the power that they all have in them from the ultimate power. It don't, it's not strange that the gods rejoice in God. Not that they revel him and love him, but that they have the advantage and the position they've been given. So they revel in that highness. Where did he say our fight was? Spiritual wickedness where? In heavenly or high places, brothers and sisters. Okay, go ahead, brother, and continue that. Verse 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Wait, wait, hold on. Nations gathered together, the kingdoms and nations gathered together to come against Babylon are coming from where, brother? From the far end of heaven. So these countries are in heaven. The powers in Romans 13 are in heaven. They are the powers of heaven. Did I read that wrong? Read that again. Where did they come from? They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Oh, okay, so they came from the end of heaven. Okay, continue. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. And these weapons are God's weapons. Continue. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. See, brother, right there, that's the future because it's the day of the Lord. Okay, I feel you. I feel where you're going. <laughs> but, no, continue, brother. Let us continue to read and understand, God willing. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman at travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Now all of this, who's scared? The Babylonians are scared because somebody coming against them. And these people coming against them are God's sanctified ones. All the words sanctified mean is separate. It ain't always talking about being separate for God's holiness. But he has set aside and chosen this nation to go and whoop this nation. I have sanctified this army to whoop that army. That's why he calling his sanctified ones separated for his anger against the Chaldeans and the, in their land as this army approaches from the north which is the armies of Medes and Persia the land of Babylon not just the city of Babylon but the land Babylonia was fearful and a lot of people don't study the history on the wars people be like well uh, uh, um, man, the, man the Persians took Babylon without firing an arrow they took the capital city but they had to beat up a whole bunch of other cities in Babylonia to get to the capital right. city. And they killed a lot of people. 
Babylon is the land, not just the city. It's the land. Just like Israel is the land and the people called Israel at the same time. But Israel is the land too. Continue. The verse day of the Lord, brother. Verse 8. And they shall be, I'm sorry, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. And when that day of the Lord come and he destroy the land of Babylon, what happens? Continue. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Uh-huh. And I will pu punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Uh -huh. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of, of Ophir. So when this is read, no, read verse 13. Go ahead, read that too. That's a good one. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce So in the day of the wrath of the Lord of hosts, he going to shake the land of Babylon, and he going to punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. Anytime you destroy the top kingdom that all nations came under for shelter, they all suffer and suffer the punishment of the power that be. Just like that woman in Revelation. So because you read this don't mean this is talking about the woman in the book of Revelation called Babylon that whore. The Babylon the Great, excuse me, that whore. This is talking about literal Babylon and who he going to stir up against them? Continue. Uh, verse 15. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Uh huh. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in Brothers and sisters, the Medes are the ones who literally attack Ancient Babylon, literal ancient Babylon, literal Medo-Persia, literally attacked them. They didn't come to take spoils and get gold and silver and leave and just make y'all pay taxes. No, they want the empire of the earth. When we destroy Babylon, we run the world. That's what happened literally. And they killed everything in front of them. That's why in front of them, it looked like the Garden of Eden, and behind them, it looked like it was nothing but desolation and death and destruction. Has anybody ever read the size of the army that Darius brought into Babylon? Even in, e even in allegory, I mean, people who saw the movie 300, how big was his army? They had never seen an army on earth that big. How big was Darius' army that he brought against the Greeks? A million deep. Only people with armies bigger than that on earth at that time would have been the Chinese. Who the Lord for, I'm, I believe I understand why, he never had Rome fight China. Never had Greece fight China. Never had Babylon fight China. Never had Medo-Persia fight China in history. Because he's saving them for something else at the end. China has been a threat forever. And the Himalayas has separated them from the rest of the world. But that's a whole nother story. Here, this is what happened literally to Babylon. But people see the day of the Lord. They see that the heavens were shaking. The sun went dark. The moon went dark. The stars didn't give their light. So automatically that has been thrown to the end of the world. But you said something earlier about order. I want to show you something else. Instead of me just saying that that's what the language is telling us, let us go to another example. Go to Ezekiel chapter 32. Believe the word of God, brothers and sisters. Don't believe me because I have to believe the same word you all have to believe. And when I read this, the language of the prophets are the first parables spoken that was revealed to us. So as I get into the parables that their children speak, I'm seeing the same word spoken. So I have to be convinced that it's meaning the same, that the same thing is being showed every generation. Go ahead, brother Ezekiel 32. And when you get there, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. 